afternoon, ladies and good gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast. With me, your host, Imperial Dane, we're off here to an exciting one versus one on the road to Kharkov, or in this case, I imagine the road to somewhere in Western Europe. Let's just say the road to. Ah, oh, crap, I can't remember her name right now for something when Belgium or Holland. Never mind then, we were watching Sign out here, finding four the United States of America taking on here for the first armor division, crashing ahead alongside this road into a German formation intent on holding this part of the road. This is a vital junction. Lone Wolf here fighting for the Wehrmacht, and we also need an immediate choice of rifle company here for Sayonara. With the Lone Wolf here with mechanized Festung armor and assault support. Rolling out under the guise of the 18th Panzer Grenadier Division. Grenadiers are arriving for him with an MG42 rapidly following up here. And we're also noting his pioneers are making an awfully advanced move here, rather rapidly and aggressively going towards the right hand side. Not what you'd expect, not on southern Kharkov. You'd expect, you know, him to go for the fuel point right off the bat. But he's in fact rushing straight for this cutoff point, which in fact connects nothing to his territory it's right off the bat so this is a rather peculiar opening from the Wehrmacht if I've ever seen one on this map anyways I mean there's always peculiar ones for every map but this one definitely strikes me as somewhat of an odd one he must be intending to actually go for the throat here the joke glove Sandra right off the bat I mean, there's no other reason to do this. He's very much intending to grapple already in a full-blown match. And this is an extremely ballsy move, then. I mean, you pretty much have to expect your opponent will always go for the few point closest for him. And this, of course, in Kharkov is it for the Northern players. So, I'm deeply surprised at this. This is some um, very risky stuff. And, of course, with the rifle company, you can easily call him a lot more rifle and quicker. There's some more rifle and quicker, of course, after the small, more native changes. I mean, this is... Uh, risky and irregular. We're seeing another gun this squad around the heading south now. Seems like the lone wolf's advance here has stalled, actually. He's not moving up any further. So already here his plan seems to have encountered a few issues, if that was his plan, by the way. I'm merely speculating on what I can see. And taking what seems like the most logical from there on. But this is definitely getting a bit odd. So it seems like he might be preoccupied with the fight down here now. Pioneer State's particular and is being charging in versus Ravnir. This is actually a bad move since Ravnir have the advantage up close, although they are low on health, they will certainly enjoy still some strength there. And there we go, all the way there, Dietrich goes down. You know, they're quickly suffering, I mean, do not underestimate the power of those M1 Garands up close. They are semi-automatic rifles compared to the German bolt action. And there we go, the other guns are pulled in, so again, already here, things are going off the rails for the Lone Wolf. These guys need to get Oh, scheisse. He might lose the unit already. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, so this is already a heavy loss right there for the Germans within the opening moments of the game. I mean, this is really sort of something I'm not used to seeing at all how this is playing out. I'm certainly starting to wonder what he's thinking of it. Can this need to retreat right now, right now? The versus especially two right from their low helpline numbers. MD42 setting up here, might be able to sort of save the day, or at least force the Americans away, there we go. Pioneer's moving up, finally he's on the moving, but he's really going to suffer in terms of resources already. I mean, his opponent's got most of the map, he's also got a few points compared to the Lone Wolf, who's only got strategic points, and that's not so much, certainly not within the first moments of the match here. Another going to do what arriving, but... This is really, really odd. No tagging on here, by the looks of it, from Saya Nara. That looks like another rifleman unit has been called in there. And they are fully veteran to one. There we 
Uh, he's actually going for a captain, so... So now it seems there's a sort of, again, feeling like how things have gone. He's probably got an advantage. He's actually struggling or rushing head on for the captain. Might want to rush for a steward, then that could work. That could work. That could very much work. Brings the MV42. Looks like he might find for shot. Also, now the rear shot troops are remaining up here. Like to sort of harass, but also used to volley fire there to stop off any units there. Finally got the fuel point here. And now he seems to again stall up a bit. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking here. It seems very odd. He must not be feeling confident after that sort of botched early game or whatever. Well, there we go, moving a bit up, rough and pushing in here. I mean, of course, with the little infantry he has, he probably is feeling a bit pressured and threatened here. By Sinai, and there we go, moving in from another side, attacking in. Gun is need to fall back, the MD-48 exposed flank. I mean, he's way too spread out here. I mean, that's also a bit of a problem with going with this kind of approach. You will end up with very thin lines that can't be easily covered. In particular, with the amount of force he has currently, that's really something he ought to be avoiding. He sort of ought to focus up on a much smaller area around here and take it from there. Instead, he's sort of trying to hold a much, much broader frontage with a much smaller force. Contact! Though we do see a nice attempt at flanking, setting up and cover up the retreat path even, trying to surround locally. Not bad as such, but again it's not really going to do that much of the fact he doesn't doesn't will really possess any automatic weapons here in the grenadiers rather minimizing the effect he can really have. Now the capture is out, and there he goes, he's actually supervising, so it's very much feel like he's going to rush here for an early steward. Basically supervising the building, speeding up the production here. So clearly here, Sino is feeling quite confident, quite strong already. Captain watching his clock here, waiting for the fuel to arrive. Cursing at who's supposed to deliver it. There's him in a lot of trouble, oh dear, the lone wolf. Careful. Careful, you daft boss. Oh, shit. He did it again. I have absolutely no idea what this fellow seems to be thinking. A capture point is under attack. And there you go, the student is on the way. He got the fuel and the production is notably sped up thanks to the captain supervising. Scowling at whoever's supposed to get it to the front and yelling down some radio. Light tank just arrived. Lone Wolf complaining, though in this case, I mean, yeah, it's not easy, but he's got essentially the easier part of the map, which is the south. But it doesn't really help the way he's playing, to be honest. Again, he's really now only maximizing the weaknesses of the Wehrmacht, but basically he's spreading out so thinly, operating his men in that way, and also not covering up his retreat paths. I mean, he's not really thinking it through so far. So, I'd rather have to pin this less on the map and more so far on the lone wolf. I'm rather deeply surprised to see him keep playing like this. I'm and no, I mean he can't be slapped because his opponent is around the top one well a bit over the top one hundred, but you know, generally not a bad player either. So it is a bit odd and we're seeing here uh like him against complete up. He's actually going for Panzer cut this first. Now the slightly odd decision there. I suppose you might want to sort of gain something versus the enemy infantry. The Panzer gun is a bit limited in that effect at the moment. But there we go, Panzer fast off. Panzer is firing away. Need to get into cover there, or get away. Still being front of the MD 42. And there we go, Panzer strikes up, wiping out the super but they're actually moving towards it, they're moving towards it, what are you doing here? Ah. And that was rather close there, almost lost the entire universe, and got the steward light tank there. Might have been what he was actually hoping for, something that's a lot harder to flank and thus, and perhaps it was also worth waiting to bait it in there. So not bad, not bad. There seems like the <laughs> MG42 got the kill there. I imagine the Panzer Gunners might be a bit pissed. Look, we shot the rockets! Well, well, I, I, I killed something with it. Shut up. Still, rather extended lines, and I'm 
you know, he should at least try to push up a bit more if he's going to keep the MD-42 there. I mean, otherwise it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Flamethrower's being upgraded. In fact, every rifleman has now been upgraded with a flamethrower. So now we're sort of adding further anti infantry pressure. And that's simply going to make things more difficult for the Panzer gunners if he gets any more. A capture point is being overrun. Still not too good looking too good there, territorial. What's we also doing here? And he's still supervising with the captain Bobby. Now he's calling up two anti tank guns very rapidly. Clearly getting very worried about enemy armor. All of a sudden, he's fighting again. He should have known he's really been able to dominate the map and the resources, so he shouldn't have to worry about it. But looks like there we go. He's actually now shifting hard towards the right hand side. Looks like we might be seeing a slightly more focused, strong decision here up from the lone wolf. A bit more focus, a bit more concentration, a bit more what actually plays the Wehrmacht style. I mean, so far he's not really been playing to what the Wehrmacht is suited for. It's more like, you know, where the Americans or the Soviets excel, if anything. Let's see if he can't pull through now. Getting more grenadiers. No upgrades for the luck grenadiers so far, though. Of course, the munitions were towards the Panzer Shakes. And they're moving up there. Cover down the retreat path there again. Panzers need to be careful. I mean, they've got a Panzer Shakes, so their anti infantry firepower is greatly diminished now. So they have to really have no go. Nice rifle grenade. Right from the flank up from behind. Panzers need to get away. But there we go. One rocket there it took out Bob. Almost losing the entire unit there. There we go. In fact, he lost then the Panzer Shrek was dropped. It looks like he actually managed to wipe out one of Sarnara's infantry units in return. A small victory there. We go. We got the captain moving up as well. Rather than moving in here, Sarnara might now, in fact, be moving. He's sort of got some putting a bit of resources here. Could be seeing a rifle grenade here. And there you go, we got the anti tank guns blasting away. Captain suppressed, not having the best of days. It looks like the weapon here were almost wiped out. Almost, in fact, they could still be wiped out here. That could be another small victory here for the lone wolf. That could certainly help him out since he's been bleeding out a bit heavily lately. And there you go, the captain almost wiped out. Oh, there we go, the rifle went down, but not before burning the rifle. Oh, gun is on fire. An American kamikaze, or at least one man who's not really good at holding on to his fuel. Now I can push good pushing up here. Needs to be careful now. Be careful now, Sanara. All of a sudden things are quickly getting a bit beyond him, maybe. And the captain died as well. Two rifleman squads and a captain all of a sudden. I mean, he can suddenly place the loss again. Thanks to elite rifleman training, which again will help minimize the attritional effect on him. But good lord. Still, the Lone Wolf needs to get out on the field a bit more properly and get back into this fight. This is certainly not good for him to still retain such a little control over the fuel. And other fun things. Still, wiping out that much will give him a sort of chance of getting back into the fight. In fact, it's time to pop over to him. My apologies, it's a bit more concerning again. Very, very odd play style. And again, it does seem a bit weird, maybe a bit confused. Not sure how to otherwise describe it. It's definitely not what would recommend sort of for the Wehrmacht opening. Quite the opposite. Your has been converted to an emergency medical but station. seems like here by the later game he's sort of getting a bit more into it. He's getting a bit more focus, a bit more controlled, a bit more clear. A bit more focused again. I mean, that's really the important thing with the Wehrmacht. You have to be sure you don't play too loosely. You don't leave too many gaps because that's something the Allies will exploit and really punish you on. The Wehrmacht maintaining a stable front line and a strong front line is very, very important. And he's also gone for assault support, getting another Panzer gun unit. A bit rare since you don't see an awful lot of Panzers at the moment. Yes. Come on, Maschnell! He gets that cutoff point away so they don't get too few points. Anyway, Southern Point they're being secured as well. And we've got still the anti tank guns up here. Looks like he's just basically has a sort of back end block position until at least they need it. And ready to blow apart some krauts. We have been assigned fresh panzer grenadiers. Ooh, Major arrives, so he's already checked up here. I mean, he's really enjoyed a strong early game. So he is now encountering it motion. Again, losing those three scores there might have been a moment of overextension or something else, but either way, 
that's going to hurt him and that's going to give Sina or the Lone Wolf here a chance to really get back into the match which we'll of course have to see if he can actually do something with he could also consider getting out an artillery field officer now to support his units also looks like they're going to be able to pick up a punch attack. no lap machine gun still on them There we go. Rather than getting suppressed here. And so tanks moving up, rear shell and troops charging in. Hands are going to need to move in a deal before he's getting caught off down south again. Riflemen in deep trouble here versus the MD42 and the Grenadiers. Rear shell troops are trying to volley down. Pioneers push off the field. MD42 sitting up there, the Panzers are actually moving up north. Oh, flanking on the anti tank gun. Not a bad idea, not a bad idea there by the Lone Wolf. So he might want to get behind it. Remember, there's a gun shield on that thing. There looks like another weapon you hit could go down. The Panthers were able to maybe wipe it up. There we go. A bit too slow there to retreat, but we do see something that's returning in response to the M8. Howard Sir Motor Carriage, or just the Scott. I believe he was actually named so by the Brits, in fact. The British ended up naming a lot of the American equipment, sort of, until the Americans basically adopted that thing. And there we go, Glenn's with a lap machine gun, finally as well. Increasing firepower. Panther is a bit of trouble, though, if he can. He might want to try and get that rifle unit as well. That would be another huge blow here to Sinara. There we go! Heavy losses inflicted upon the American riflemen. First Armored's rifle units are getting absolutely decimated here. Absolutely decimated. And that's definitely going to give the Lone Wolf the chance he needs to get back into the fight the heavy casualties basically inflicting. Though again, thanks to Rifle Company, Sinaric can to a certain extent overcome this. Again, basically through calling in veteran units to replace. So it wouldn't be as bad with, say, this force as with others, but uh, even then he has to be careful. Quick about the Ladung against us Americanon. Bits getting blown to... well, bits. Bobs. Rifle enforcing where the Panzer gun it is. MG42 moving up. We are ready for action. Yes. But of course, I mean, he's basically just taking advantage of the situation as he sees it again. You know, he's had a lot of fuel. He doesn't have to worry about much about, say, enemy armor and tank at the moment so getting an M8 Scott right there off the bat will certainly help him will be allowed to sort of really punish the enemy infantry greatly with its 75 millimeter high explosive rounds so that is not a bad decision whatsoever I've got here quickly abandoning this small ship there Good job I'm starting to get the impression that the lone wolf is saving up for a tiger not uncommon, I suppose he feels like he needs to go for that, considering this how the situation is overall gone. I suppose I can't blame him for that. Not per se bad, though at the same time, you know, he might even then have a chance of getting, going for a Panzer IV and thus getting out a bit earlier, pressing his opponent a bit more, and certainly also seeing something about these M8s. Since we're now seeing two on the field here, he's actually doubling down on it. That's clearly a sign of extreme confidence there from Sayonara into a situation, and he's not going to have to worry about any serious anti-tank threat for the while. And so far, the Lone Wolf is only feeding into that by not going for, say, an early Panzer for something like that. Though, of course, at the same time, I mean, he's still got lots of anti-tank guns, so it's not going to be even that easy. And I suppose that could be a reason why he also goes for the Tiger. He does possess a greater chance of basically shrugging off shots from them. So it isn't quite as one-dimensional as some might like to believe. So even then, some regular armor might still have a place to sort of cover things up. In particular, since he's only keeping the anti-tankers in one place, you're forming a decent anti-tank frontage, but at the same time leaving the rest of the map rather exposed to enemy armor. By the way, he's been up there bombarding any target that might oppose Uncle Sam and Liberty. Bombarding them with righteous high explosive fire. And he is caught trying to flank in here. I'm not entirely sure why he was doing that, but he is quickly reminded to go elsewhere. Still no move towards the fuel there. He seems very intent leading his opponent with it. And there we go. An Orpu Blitz moving up to support the Wehrmacht effort here. 
Rolling up und arriving für die Panzergrenadierdivision. Need to deploy that thing. Ooh, Attila striking down here. I mean, also the right near really dangerous threat here to the Panzer Grenadiers. I mean, it's a really nasty combination to fight with infantry. This dual Scott. They also look a bit fun being all tiny like that. We are losing a sector. There you go, Panzer coming under heavy fire already. He's actually charging into them. Right from there with a flame for a knot on this. Best in there. Also got the two Scots there blasting away. Right, there's no tomorrow. Looks like the Panzers there will get wiped out. A tragic loss there for the Reich. No, it looks like. Oh! Gott im Himmel! Run, Dietrich! Run! Barely making it out of there! Looks like the weapon you in the wash are wiped out. But well, this is definitely dangerous fighting here. Scott just basically blasts away anything that looks remotely German. Occasionally hitting a few ones with a German surname. There are a lot of names actually weren't actually a lot German there around World War II. I believe it all happened during World War One, where things became very anti-German. A lot of people basically changed names to avoid, you know, even sounding German. Some very nasty things happened there to German minorities in the United States, I believe. Anyway, it's Tiger Tank advancing here. A bit careful there, but looks like though we do see now a response in from the Easy 8 as well. And right near and a bit of top need to cover on the tiger. There we go. Good shot, good shot. Helmut. Infantry following up support. Good, good. Make a move for the fuel as well. Infantry a bit depleted and over to Sinara. The two Scots and an easy eight. Rapid marching, there go Panthers opening up, firing a vape, but again the Scots shouldn't to be ever the threat. Panthers need to have to fall back from here rapidly before they get turned into tiny bits. Tiger being repaired, in fact, is repaired, also noting a second Noble Blitz. He's going to get a ton of resources, then he's going to get plenty of munitions and fuel. Not bad, not bad. I think he could have done with it earlier, but in the end, you know, better late than never. And ultimately, he's still going to be getting, well, about well, 10 munitions more altogether out of these two points here, plus six more fuel. That's definitely not going to hurt. That should allow him to get more, to say, how he's stocked, and as well, for example, upgrade more of his men. So, as long as you end up making use of it, that's good. It's only been a bit rare we actually seen a Wehrmacht play actors sort of invest heavily into them. Target advancing no, Panzer is packed for the moving up. Trying to steal the MD42 that could end up a bit in tears. Close, close. Can they make it? Run, Conrad, run! Looks like he did it, looks like he remembered to tie his shoelaces this time around. Allowing him to actually sprint away from the crowds. Easy 8 though, firing away. Wrapping up north though, might be in bigger trouble here versus the Tiger. The Tiger with its 88mm gun, high explosive shells and the likes. Nice shot there. From the anti tank guns, forcing the Tiger away. The Easy 8 joining in as well. So nice effect here. Taking up position again. He's going for the center victory point all the time. He does seem to forget here the devastating firepower of the Mid Scots. Looks like an airstrike is going in. Yes, indeed. He's going straight here for the medical position. Oh, nice strike there by the Luftwaffe. It could have done a bit better, but ultimately still did a lot of damage, leaving the Major, well, um, dead. Leaving only an aide and a few other units there. And the ambulance was almost ultra wrecked as well. So very nice to see, actually, the fragmentation bombing run getting used for once. He's actually using the vehicle crew to repair the ambulance. That's a first. You know, I didn't join the army to repair ambulances. Well, maybe not. But you might end up being in one, so better get to it.
Any small pioneers on the way here. Panzer's moving out. A bit rare you actually see a player rely so much on Panzer gun he's doing nowadays. In particular versus the Americans, they do tend to struggle quite a bit, in particular with the rifle get upgraded. But here's one interesting thing, he's actually not upgraded his rifleman. No BARs, no bazookas, no nothing to sort of really mow down those crowds a bit further. And he's got the munitions for it as well, he's got the resources, so I mean, it would actually not be a bad move to sort of upgrade his rifleman with Browning Automatics, or bazookas. But oh well, I digress. Scott moving up perhaps a bit too far. In fact, opening up with the Tiger Man again, a good shot off there. Panthers still need to get away. Getting murdered there again, you know, they do struggle. There you go, Scott out front of the pack 40. Panther out there, Kanona. Fjertzik. The biggest one is basically sort of its class, if you will. Most of the tank guns with the that kind of caliber was actually forced to be towed by vehicles since they're simply too heavy to sort of be pulled around. Pulled around by infantry. The pack 40 due to certain things sort of make it lighter was not. In part the gun shield was actually one of those things. Whereas most had a sort of more solid thing, the gun shield on the pack 40 was actually two thinner sheets of metal with a bit of space between them. So, little fun fact there. This is on the other hand a bit of a bad idea, trying to charge head on with some infantry. Very bad idea there, very bad idea. And he did get properly punished for it. Somehow he's now actually managed to hold him out large treasures despite still using some rather risky strategies in doing that. Again, leaving his forces very much overextended. The time here for the mid-game analysis. Current situation is, I mean, we are seeing here that Sinai is being pushed a bit back, but overall he's still got the larger force. But interesting enough, he's playing a lot more passively all of a sudden. But at the same time, he's certainly lacking something to really hunt down that tiger. And certainly getting... Uh, Jackson right now are too much, certainly so the best with a higher range, higher damage. They could certainly make short work of the Tiger under the proper conditions. In particular, since the M8 Scots could then sort of follow up and knock out any pack 40s that might be covering it, thus making things easier here for the tank destroyers. He needs to get more aggressive, he needs to get shifting out. I mean, again, the Lone Wolf has a very small force at the moment. He needs to take advantage of that and basically strike across as many points as possible, forcing him back and again denying him more territory once more. I mean, he does seem to be an extremely bad habit here that the Lone Wolf has, and he does seem to be not really good on sort of defending territory, or for that matter, knowing when to stop chewing off large chunks of territory which he can't defend, realistically. And so, I mean, looking at his force again, it's very small at the moment, and also looking in terms of damage. You know, he's a bit behind. Though, overall, he's acting on something equal there in terms of actually getting some kills off, so. Not too bad, I suppose. I mean, it's not like he's doing that versus the Russians. That would actually be a bit of a problem. Well, he's up, obviously aiming for another time. Getting that out could certainly help him as well. Allow him a much stronger striking force. But he needs to go on the offense. I mean, with the kind of force he currently has, again, he can't really hold the amount of territory he has. So he needs to pressure his opponent. He needs to keep Sayonara on the defensive. He wants to have a chance of actually defending it. If he, keeps, if he goes on the defensive, he's very much going to risk losing all of it because, again, he can't hold it. He's going to risk basically splitting up his forces even further and losing any sort of kind of cohesion or strength. So instead he's gaining up two tigers, go on the offensive, maybe keep up some Luftwaffe strikes to sort of help support out, clear out some maybe support weapons, and that way push his opponent off the field. And of course, Sarnau's objective is to stop the Lone Wolf before that happens, before he builds up a large tiger force, knock this one out, again get some tanks with the lights in and sort of push him out, or at least get the rest of the map. And of course, he should also be able to actually see on the tactical map that his opponent actually here has two supply trucks, so he might also want to consider actually launching a raid to knock them out. I mean, the faster you get these over blitzers out of the way, and thus, well, wipe out 400 manpower, but also now a lot of fuel and man uh, munitions income to his opponent, the better, because that's certainly not something that should be underestimated either. So, back to the fight here to this rather peculiar match. And seems like the lone wolf is confusing the Scot with the Stuart. All right, fellas. Final checks. They do look a bit similar, but the Scot or oh, has a bit more punch in some regards, in particular versus infantry. But again, he does feel a bit more defence now, which is a bit funny considering he's actually got the larger force. 
Yet he's still the one being defensive. They're going white phosphorus ballast going down here. Big two points. Why is actually looking pretty equal with a slight advantage of all things here to the lone wolf? Which is not what you'd expect. Looks like he's finally getting that armor moving. I mean, a bit surprised. I mean, he's really been holding it, holding it back. Rather than attacking across here, but coming under fire for the tiger. Seem need to be careful there, Johnny. Tiger slowly there, another easy eight available. Though again, I do think he should aim for Thanks, Jackson. Nope, he's sure going for another easy eight. But we need a lot of resources being supplied here to the 18th Panzer Grenadier Division. A lot. So it looks like they're getting priority in terms of supplies and whatnot from high command. A capture point is under attack. And there you go, two tigers now assembled. Supply line just got cut off. From the former Kampfgruppe Hummel. Which was actually a tiger battle group assembled from basically training tigers and into Arnhem and later on well formed into another tiger or oh, heavy tiger battalion basically sent out to the front line so little fun fact there. The tigers actually dispatched from it were actually basically assembled from different parts and were a bit peculiar in that regard. Blasting away there at the rifleman doing quite a bit of heavy damage and there we go another white phosphorus battle down. Pack 40 here, right needs to be careful versus two tigers. I mean, that's pretty much suicide. I mean, there's suicide. Well, let's not go into that, but either way, you know, pretty dumb to hang around like two tigers there in this case. He got a bit lucky. Sherman's there getting off some good shots, anti tanking as well. No tank aim, no, no tank aim, no armor piercing shells there. That's a bit disappointing. He could really have done a lot more and possibly knock them out. In fact, none of them is using tank aim. Come on, Sayonara. Take aim is one of the best abilities these things have. Combine that with, again, with the armor-piercing rounds, I think we'd actually knock out those Tigers. Or at least it knocked out one, but instead they actually were allowed to get away. Feet, I mean, remember, you know, remember, ladies and gentlemen, use the abilities on your anti-tank anti -tank guns. Remember to use the abilities. They can make a world of a difference. In this case, though, the Tigers take you away. This Tiger Gruppen. And it's a command of Hauptmann Dietrich. Fun Tiger Pants. More Panzer Gunners arriving here. MG4 sitting up here. A bit harder to flank, I suppose, in some regards, though. There's a gap there, though it's going to be a long route to get behind it and might have a chance of getting spotted there. But very little infantry left here for the Lone Wolf. I mean, he does need to work on that as well. His unit preservation does seem a bit peculiar. Or it might be because of, I mean, Sayonara is a pretty solid player. Of course, it's punishing him pretty still solidly. I mean, those two scout Scots, they're actually pretty nasty versus infantry. But even then. They actually end up killing his own member there, and grenade. That was a bit unfortunate. Another re on unit all of a sudden. Send your mission. Send your orders. Spread out. Knock it off and listen up. And getting a sniper now. Let's see. Interesting choice. And for taking being assault by several angles. No grenades upgrades, so he could for some use a smoke grenade to sort of obfuscate things. Right, he can do see force back. And the Tigers are on the move here, rushing ahead. Large amounts of Kupstil. Ready to strike down some enemies of the Reich, but again, very little infantry. We also noting that his opponents are now is actually a full pop cup now, more or less. Remember, your tanks are more accurate when they're not moving. I believe American tanks are actually slightly more accurate on the move, though, due to the fact they have stabilizers. And there you go, Ruffin, you look down. It looks like a fragmentation bombing round. It actually ends up hitting the Tiger. Unfortunate there. 
and then they'll gain veterans who won. Easy Eight's moving up to take on this massive German armored threat. Definitely going to be something to deal with. But if he's going to go with Easy German, he's going to need. Well, Easy Eight is going to need more than just two because, I mean, there are two Tigers as well. And one of them has got access to Blitzkrieg. So on top of that, things get very ugly there. Very ugly. Actually, using the snap there, secure territory. Bold. Still needs more infantry there, though, for Mr. Lone Wolf. Now the fragmentation bombing run already available in these two. Upper blitzes have already paid them off. They'll send them off quite handsomely. It's actually surprisingly how sort of passive Sinai has gotten. Though probably with two tags I've bound, I mean, he's probably feeling a lot less confident, so he's got something bigger. Let's just speed this up a wee bit. A lot of engagement. I imagine Sinai is slowly building up fields to sort of get something. And they go right and coming apart from the two tigers. Rapidly rushed off. And obviously the lone wolf is not in a rush either, he feels. He's not the time being, can't be coming from the two Shermans. Fences shattered. And there you go. Oh dear, he actually caught the Scots here. Large armored engagement going in here. And Titanic as well, they're pointing in the wrong direction. Allowing the Tigers to actually maneuver them. One's got down, another's got about closer going down as well. Will this happen? Nope. They can't see due to the smoking wreck of the first one, even in the death, they say. Others, and there you go, Fragmentation Bombing on going in on the anti tank here. Playing up one threat here to the tanks. Crew utterly wiped out the anti tank in trouble. Pack 40 firing up here for Easy Eight trying to flank in. Anti tank on firing here. Got a bit too close, they should have probably moved it up here, so that a bit more distance between it. Still the Sun Army picking right this range, you not to blame. So the rear exposed not good. Sherman in trouble, getting caught from several sides. Easy Eight's having flanked around. Instead, Yamapis of White Phosphorus Battles going down. And that actually allows the Sherman to escape since the Tiger can't see through the thick smoke. And Sherman can't fire through from it if it goes into it. Sherman Easy Eight now needs to get away. Get away! Drive, Johnny, drive! Sherman Easy Eight, or oh, Tiger Tank almost close to getting knocked. There we go! Veterans E2! A very close quarters engagement here. All of a sudden things got a lot more exciting. And that could easily have gone either way. In the end he still suffered quite a few losses. They lost anti-tank gun crews and anti-tank gun and a veteran Scott. So that was quite the harsh battle. Plus his opponent gained a veteran to one tiger and a veteran two tiger. That is not necessarily what he might have been wanting to get. The Lone Wolf wants more building of his force. He's still relying on Panzer Grenadiers of all the things. The one of them has reached Veteran 2 3, another one Veteran 2 1, close to Veteran 1. More Pioneers, so they need to quickly get to work on those Tigers. And he's still got tons of munitions ready for another airstrike. Support the forces of the Wehrmacht. Though, in general, I mean. By 1944-45, the Stukas themselves were rather getting out faced for other things like the Focke Wolf 190, which could actually fire rockets at the enemy as well. A bit disappointed, actually, they didn't add in those for the Orbit Commando vest. Some airstrikes for those. I think that would have been fun. Panzer goes under fire from the rifleman, advancing. MG42, they're stolen, and they're getting caught up in the open. A bad position there the by the lone wolf. Run off. And a quick airstrike here, in fact. And pinning down two entire units of rifleman. Good, good. Snobby used his act to support the pack crew. Not bad, not bad. Lots of 50 cover there, best just the Stuka. A 
It looks like it will get away there. MD42 on the racing troops advancing too far. Easy X moving in. No turn to bring that anti tank gun, by the way. First tiger almost repaired. Almost, but not quite. I have a feeling he maybe shouldn't have gone for that many easy eights instead, should have at least gotten one. Jackson up. Passes we got coming up from Rifleman from several sides. Even. Another strafing run immediately called in on the first after the first one. The Luft officer seems to have gotten very active during this battle, a rarity on the Western Front. And they got a fourth EC8, a fourth EC8, not a single Jackson in sight. I can't help but feel that is definitely a strategic mistake right there by Sayonara. Still trying to get those Stukas there with 50 calibers mounted on top. Not large advance going in, but he's attacking head on on the pack. 40. Bad move there, bad move. Should have sent an infantry first, to be honest. And there you go, one Sherman already heavily damaged. There you go, Tigers opening up. One Sherman abandoned, apparently. No? Apparently not. It's Sarah's actually abandoned, but apparently wasn't either way. One Sherman down there. Tigers scored a nice fat kill there for Zerai. They burn like joys. Moving head there with the one with the longer range. Good job there, getting a nice shot down the Sherman. Shots firing off there, but failing to penetrate the Tiger's frontal armor. Pack 4 to recruit as well, and right now you could actually blitz after the Sherman thing and get them. But it seems like it's not interesting, so we see White Phosphorus Barras is sort of goodbye gift right there from Sayonara on the Pack 40, burning it away, so not killing. Like to pull back and healed up if necessary. Back here to Sayonara. His force is looking ever so battered. His Scott has actually seen very little action all of a sudden. He might have gotten a bit too passive with that one. But they're going straight for the Panzer gun. His jugular right with it. Well, that was close. I mean, you could even use that sort of smoke out the pack for advancing. But there we go. Tigers on the move again. Achtung, Achtung, Panzermarsch. And there you go. Raven ending up some serious trouble. Anti tank of is still not recruit right now in dire straits, getting absolutely mutilated. Easy hits finally, they go. Veteran D2, Ty getting off a few good hits there, but also taking a good hits too. Few shots going off there. We've dropped to a hundred points. Few shots going off there. Veteran know how will help us to better prepare our infantry. Another saving one here doing absolutely excellently versus the Americans right there. Painting down crews and the likes. We got the snipers here basically taking three shots while all this is going on. The, the Scott here is certainly trying to extinguish that sniper's light with candle, snuff it out. Sherman's counter attack here, rapidly advancing on the tiger positions. Head on assault there, perhaps not the wisest idea, if anything. Sending things easy with the Tigers, the Super Soldier going off. The Tiger actually heavy damage. Close to Major Feet, closely knocked out here. Shermans might have a chance there. Fragmentation bombing run, maybe, or a strafing run. 
Oh, he drove straight in. He drove head on. He's ended up trying to flank here. Now he's getting caught here by the pack. 48. Bad move right there for Sion. He might have gotten a bit too eager. A bit too hasty there. Making the wrong decision. Ultimately, you're starting to get some heavy fire on the Sherman. Sort of losing even more without still getting any of those Tigers. Rather unfortunate on current. You could still try and flank in here, but now it looks like the Tigers are getting away. And the other one's also close to Vetsinti too. Situation remains ever nasty looking here for Sayonara versus the Lone Wolf. So the Tigers will need a lot of repairs before they can head out to the fight. I mean, if they're caught right now by Sayonara actually making a slight move there, he could actually at least get one of them. And they'll actually be the one closest to Vet 23 even, which would be a huge blow right there to the Lone Wolf. Though he's actually got resources to put your place. Victory points reasonably close there as well. Tank support is here. Sherman and ready. another easy 8 I think he might have gotten a bit blind there, just relying only on the easy 8 I definitely think a Jackson would have helped him here and there. In particular, it's a veteran's one that's increased penetration with the users of armor piercing rounds. Speeding things up a bit. Well, there we go. So now being a bit more active now. Up time there you go. Tigers moving up. Close to veteran three despite being heavily damaged. This looks like the lone wolf being rather confident. There you go. Veteran two and one. Tiger, now they both have increased range. Very close to three. Sherman, oh, getting stuck there. Oh, no. Pathing issues. And good night. There's one chance might have been laying down a smoke screen from either this or this. But either way, that was deeply unfortunate there. That should not have happened. I just only have no idea what that tank was doing either. I was only been frustrated. But Tiger rolling about here now. Veteran C3. Great immunability and will create a rate of fire. Making a very lethal piece of hardware. An ace on his in his own right. If you will. Units are still getting wiped out here. The lone wolf still making mistakes. the Tigers move forward. Charging forwards relentlessly. And there you go, the Vetsin 3 Tigers definitely proving to be a massive threat here. Another straight and corning all of this. Good, good. Very nice to see some armor coordination there with abilities and the likes. In turn, there's very little infantry opposition there to the armor, allowing them to operate more freely. Good, lovely. Pack 40 also moving up there, showing to be careful though, it is Veteran D3. Tigers are a few good shots there. Another sledding run there. Pack 40 firing away, Tiger joining in. EC8 needs to fall back, KB4 to knock down. Oh, that was bloody close. Well, there's barely anything holding the triggers for He just keeps calling in EC8. I definitely think. Something might have gone slightly wrong there in terms of mental processes. So he just keeps relying on them. Definitely not good for him. There he goes, shots going off, it looks like GG there from Sanara and such. Game over, definitely an odd fight in particular considering the sort of ranking they had. Definitely an odd fight, not what I usually see, a lot of damage, a lot of kills in the end actually inflicted, but definitely not your usual kind of fight at all.
In the end, though, we actually got to see a Veterans 3 Tiger. That's actually quite a rarity alongside a Veterans 2, almost Veterans 3 Tiger as well. So while the Lone Wolf really had what I had to say it was a rather messed up start there for the Wehrmacht player, he was in the end able to rally partly again thanks to the losses here inflicted upon Sinara, also in the early games, and Sinara might have slightly extended from time to time. And he did show some skill and actually quickly punching that and really tearing the stuffing then out of Sayonara there, and that might have been the slight fault there. He might have gone perhaps a bit overconfident, or maybe he had a slight issue with that. Either way, those losses allowed the Lone Wolf to sort of slowly make his way back into the fight, and then sort of, you know, he rather managed to come back. And once he got those out, I mean, the great coordinate usage of the Luftwaffe command in conjunction with the Tiger tanks, well, the Luftwaffe abilities, and the Orbit Blitz really made for a strong comeback hand overall crushing Sayonara, who, as the game progressed, got more passive, and certainly it had some issues there. It seems like... With it's a bit of a weak spot there because he never seemed to consider getting a jacks, at least not while playing, you know, sort of delivers and blows. And certainly also his anti tank and positioning there was at times a bit odd, and that also allowed the Lone Wolf to quickly overcome them in some cases. For example, this one being abandoned also for some time as well. So there were some issues there, I think, from Sina, which actually hurts him and sort of helped Lone Wolf to seem much stronger again in the late game than he was early game. Early game moves was rather weak, but he held on and actually sort of made a strong comeback there. Partly thanks to the Tigers, but even then you don't get a Tiger to fetch in 3 and under to White 22 if you don't know something about what you're doing. And numbers would certainly have thrown those Tigers away rather rapidly. I mean, so now it could definitely do something beyond the ECH, but even then, I mean, occasionally just charge straight at the Tigers rather than trying to flank them. I think that was definitely a mistake right there by Sayonara, which only made things easier for the Tigers because the Tigers are very much built for, you know, taking shots to the front and delivering damage that way as well. So he flanked them, I think he might have lost some from time to time as well. So that's, well, rather it. Both players could maybe look a bit more at the unit preservation. The worst of issues there here and there where it might have been a bit silly. But uh, way, interesting play, certainly not what I'm used to seeing, which is rather the primary reason I'm actually bringing this up, because it's just well, a bit odd, but also just, you know, show off some bits and tigers at the end. Really, really rare to see that nowadays. So... Oh, well, also the double, double blitzes and all that luft of usage. Rare as well. So, hey, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from this. If you did, want to subscribe to your friends. Share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in the replay and provide some feedback in the comments. If you do provide a replay, do provide a link to the leaderboards as well. And this is Imperial Dane saying cheers.